the kind people at Anycubic reached out to my channel to review the Anycubic Cobra S1 combo. This review is my honest opinion. My old printer has been gathering dust for years. It never really fit with my view of technology. I want something that just works without any fuss. So after reading what the Cobra S1 had to offer, I was extremely excited to give it a try. Cobra S1 Combo is a complete printing ecosystem. With support of up to 8 colours, active filament drying and quiet operation, it's designed to make high quality 3D printing easier and more enjoyable than ever. The print speed sits comfortably at 300mm a second, with the ability to reach up to 600mm a second. Thanks to the included filament hub, you can print in 4 or, with an expansion, 8 colours. Material support is wide ranging too, from PLA and PETG to flexible TPU, ABS, ASA, carbon fibre and glass fibre. Its 250mm cubed build volume provides plenty of space for everything from functional prototypes to large creative projects. It also comes packed with smart features such as filament drying while printing, auto leveling and flow compensation, fail saves like power loss recovery, run out detection, spaghetti detection and belt tension monitoring. The printer is designed for convenience and ease of use. A 4.3 inch adjustable touchscreen displays with a simple intuitive menu system. It boasts quiet operation, built-in LED lighting for a clear view of your prints, an integrated HD camera for remote monitoring and time-lapse recording. For hassle-free printing, it includes a PEI spring steel plate for easy print removal and a 320 Celsius quick release hot end built for both performance and convenience. So let's follow the journey from unpacking to setup to printing and finally my overall thoughts. The Anycubic Cobra S1 comes shipped in a large box with the Ace Pro cleverly packaged inside, bolted to a bed protector to prevent it from moving during transit. The supplied instruction sheets show how to free the Ace Pro. This involves removing the top cover and packaging, opening the front door and then removing the two screws marked with the orange arrows. Once these are removed, the Ace Pro can be lifted out through the top. Behind it, you'll find an accessory box containing the parts needed to connect the Ace Pro to the Cobra S1 Combi printer. To my delight, the printer itself comes fully assembled. The bed protector must be unbolted and removed by loosening the screws marked with the orange arrows. The print bed also needs to be unlocked in the same way. There is some additional packaging around the print head that must be removed before unpacking and connecting the Ace Pro. After removing the protective plastic, you will also find several accessories including a sample of PLA filament and four tubes that will later be attached to the printer. Other included accessories are the nozzle cleaner, a USB stick, some basic tools and an activated carbon pouch. At the back of the printer, connect the anti-blocking module and the accessory leads to both the printer and the filament unit. Then we can attach all the filament tubes. A word of caution, the clips that secure the tubes into the Ace Pro can be tricky to remove. One of mine flew off into the distance and was nearly lost. On the last clip, I discovered that rotating the flat part downwards allowed it to be slid over the edge much more easily. The tubes and cells must be pushed firmly into the ports, and then the clips reattached. A cable organizer can be added to keep the tubes neatly bundled together. Then connect both power cables, one for the printer and one for the filament unit. Finally, turn the printer around to the front, open the door and insert the active carbon bag. At this point, both units can be plugged into the mains and you're ready to begin the initial setup and calibration. Next, we move on to the initial setup, which is quite straightforward. You'll select your language and enter your Wi-Fi connection details, which are essential for over-the-air firmware updates. You also have the option to install the phone app, I skipped this step, inserted the USB stick and started the calibration process, including something called resonance compensation. This part can be quite alarming. 
as the printer vibrates increasingly louder until the test is complete. After the printer proceeds to the auto leveling phase. And once that's done, the setup is finished. The next stage is to load the filament into the Ace Pro. First place the filament reel into the Ace Pro, ensuring it sits on the rollers. The reel should rotate freely. Next, ensure the end of the filament is free from dust, straight and cut flat. This is essential for the filament to intake through the filament tubes and pass through the anti-blocking module. Push the filament into the inlet, the light will flash, then the Ace Pro will tend to pull in the filament. You may need to give it a gentle push to grip the filament to allow it to pass through the inlet. The spool will begin to unwind. From the front panel, select the filament icon. Choose the real position you are loading and then extrude. The hot end will heat to the appropriate temperature. Once this temperature is reached, the Ace Pro will feed the filament through the tubes, past the anti-blocking module and into the printer. You can observe this process from the back of the printer. If the filament does not pass through the anti-blocking module, ensure the tubes are firmly inserted and the module is not blocked with debris. The printer will extrude a small amount of material whilst taking in filament from the spool. Once complete, the waste material will be ejected from the back, completing the process. After successfully loading, you can press finish and then retract the filament, which allows the Ace Pro to clear the filament from the anti-blocking module and wind it back onto the spool. The filament loading process is now complete. For my first print, I selected a test model from the supplied USB stick, the PLA 44 minute Benchy. I left the auto leveling enabled to see how long the entire process would take from start to finish. I chose the red filament, and then the printer began its preparation sequence, reheating the hot end, wiping the nozzle, performing auto leveling, feeding filament, etc. By the time it actually started printing the first layer, nearly 14 minutes had passed. During the print, I used a free phone app to take decibel readings. To show the operating sound level, the noise ranged between 48.5 decibels and peaked around 60 decibels, which is comparable to background music. I suspected the reading wasn't entirely accurate, as it was affected by the microphone's orientation. In practice, the printer noise level was similar to that of an inkjet printer. The print completed in approximately 54 minutes, with the printer finishing its shutdown sequence a few minutes later. From the start, I had both the printer and the filament hub connected to a usage monitor. At a rate of 23 pence per kilowatt hour, the total energy cost came in around two pence. I removed the magnetic build plate and inspected the final result. The print showed some light stringing, most likely because I had forgotten to switch on the Ace Pro heater to dry the filament. Overall, I was very pleased with the print quality, though less so with the amount of time it took to actually begin the printing. According to discussions in the local Facebook group, disabling the auto leveling should reduce the start up time significantly. This is not needed every time you print. For my second print, I chose the 15 minute PLA Benchy and disabled the auto leveling. This reduced the startup process to six minutes. This led to a total completion time of around 21 minutes. The results were of a good standard, obviously due to the much lower resolution print, it wasn't to the same level as that of the 45 minute Benji. The supplied USB stick contains both manuals and the AnyCubic Slicer Next software. It contains both Windows and Mac versions. The install process is straightforward. First select your region, then your printer model. Then the filament type, and if necessary, download and install any updates. If an update is required, your previous selection will be saved and applied when you open the slicer. Workbench tab offers different ways to connect to your printer. I chose to connect via the IP rather than through the cloud. After that, I was able to connect to the printer over my local network. The software is divided into three main sections, Prepare, Preview and Workbench. In Prepare, I loaded a model I wanted to print in multiple colors. I was able to split the model into parts and easily assign each part a color, pulled directly from the Ace Pro. In Preview, I could review the sliced project and then send it to my printer with several output options available. I then selected remote printing and enabled the bed leveling and time-lapse recording. Once I started the print, 
The software switched me to the Workbench tab, where I could monitor the print in real time, which included a live stream from the remote camera. The print began successfully, I closed the slicer and reconnected a little over an hour later to check the progress. The print had completed without any issues. It was worth mentioning that this was my first ever multicolor print. While there was some color bleeding, likely due to setup or environmental factors, I was very satisfied with the result. Research suggests that adjusting the prime tower and flush amounts would be a good starting point to reduce this issue in future prints. Time lapse of the print was available by exporting it from the printer's front panel, which it saved to the USB stick. My next test wanted to try a larger print, a pen holder I found on printables. I've left the link below and in the description of this video. A reduced size in a single color, the model should take just over an hour to print. It was built in such a way that it allowed me to separate and color the individual parts in the slicer. Ideal to test the Ace Pro's filament swapping capabilities. This obviously would increase the print time, but to over six hours? Even after enabling such settings as flushing to the infills and supports to help save both time and filament. At completion, I was disappointed by the amount of waste that had been generated. The finished model was of a high quality, but only weighed in at 25 grams. The supports and prime tower came in at 12 grams, but the purge waste added another 45 grams to the end print. During the multicolor test prints, I also timed a full filament change cycle to truly discover the amount of time that's been lost. Although I don't have a direct comparison, I imagine other brands with the same single nozzle system would face the same challenges. Physically extracting and reloading filament into the same hot end takes both time and material to purge the previous color. Due to this, I don't really see how multicolor printing through a single nozzle setup, whether from any cubic or any other brand is an attractive option once you consider the time, waste and environmental impact. The mechanical process of swapping filaments isn't something you can customize. For me, the Ace Pro is more of a convenience feature. It provides dust-free filament storage and drying. It also prevents tangles and ensures a smooth, consistent filament feed during the printing process. Please note that the printer can still be used without the Ace Pro. And this is by attaching the supply filament holder to the back of the machine. And the final results. Full filament chain cycle, well, it took the Ace Pro about two and a half minutes. As for the printer itself, I'm very pleased with the performance. It produced high quality prints and single colored jobs were completed in a reasonable time. No 3D printer is perfect, but this one really delivers for the price. I like machines that just work without any fuss and the S1 has been surprisingly easy and reliable. If you're interested in reading more about the Anycubic Cobra S1 or would like to purchase one, I have a link in the description of this video. Thanks for your time in watching this video and I wish you all the best on your 3D printing journey.